Hello class. In this lecture, I will be talking about uh, paired difference using uh, T-STAT and we will be doing some uh, hypothesis testing problems uh, on this uh, concept. Uh, so paired difference uh, mostly is used in situations, suppose you wanted to know uh, wear and tear in uh, wear and tear in Nike and uh, Reebok so you wanted to compare them so these two are the two different company shoes and you wanted to see how much uh, uh, wear and tear do they have so which one is better or uh, are they uh, the wear and tear are they equal so those are different uh, questions that you might have so if you have such situations in order to avoid biasness in data what people do is they will give each uh, each uh, customer or each observation uh, one nike shoe and one reebok shoe to wear uh, such that they can wear on one leg Nike shoe and on the other leg they can wear Reebok shoe and maybe they can use them for one year and after one year you can bring those shoes back and look at what is the wear and tear. Uh, so that's uh, how the experiment is conducted. So in such cases, suppose I have different observations. So when I say observations, these might be uh, I might give to different students in the class to wear uh, Nike shoe on one leg and uh, then uh, on the other leg a Reebok shoe. So observation one, this might be the first student and on one leg. So this is sample one. So this is leg one. So maybe they are wearing Reebok on leg one and then sample two they might be this is leg two they might be wearing Nike shoe on the other leg so observation one the so this is uh, I write it as uh, the value where you get for wear and tear observation one x one one so this represents the first one represents the observation the second re one represents the leg so again this is observation one and the leg two so again i take another student in the class which is observation two so this will be x21 so for the second student first leg and this will be x Two, two. So all this data will be given when you are solving the problems. Uh, observation 3. This is x31 and x32. So this is third observations leg 1, third observations leg 2. So, so on you can do for n observations so i can take so this might be uh, the final one might be observation n and then uh, this might be x n1 and x n2 so that is the observation ends first leg and observation ends second leg. So to measure the wear and tear, we look at what is the difference between uh, the Reebok uh, measure and the uh, uh, Nike's measure. So we are looking at the difference or so how you define your sample one and sample two also becomes important so this is uh, sample 1 minus sample 2 
so that means we are doing d1 is x11 minus x12 so i'm just subtracting these numbers this minus this so this you have to do by yourself so this is mostly this uh, uh, column you are doing by yourself so d2 so i will just use a different color such that you know this is the calculation which x11 minus x12 so d2 is x21 minus x22 d3 is x31 minus x32 d and so on mm, dn is xn1 minus xn2 so we are mostly interested in uh, uh, x d bar here and that would be uh, usually given by t1 plus t2 so on until dn by n so again in this you will be doing and then once you have this uh, the other part which you will need is the standard deviation of the deviations so this is this is the mean of the deviations okay mean of the deviations and the the other thing you will need is the standard deviation of the mm, deviations which is given by SD the formula square root of di so each of these d1 d2 d3 minus mm, xd bar so you do the sum of all those you square this and then n minus 1 so this is a basic standard deviation formula so why this is important when you are conducting an a um, hypothesis testing so this is um, hypothesis testing you define your null hypothesis so your null your alternative again this is mostly the thing is uh, once we have these deviations we are not interested in these we are interested in these deviations so the one thing that can happen is uh, a two tail problem where the deviations is equal to zero that means both are because d is sample one minus sample two so if this is zero sample one minus sample two uh, over a long range if it is uh, zero that means both are same the wear and tear in both nike and in both reebok and nike is sample one is reebok sample two is mm, nike is if it is zero that means they are same same if the alternative will be mu d not equal to zero that means they are different so this is a two tail problem so if i say our null hypothesis is mu d greater than or equal to zero uh, this means d sample one minus sample two sample one is uh, reebok minus sample Two, which is Nike so if this is greater than or equal the greater than zero or equal to zero that means Reebok has more wear and tear compared to uh, more compared to Nike so the alternative will be mu d less than zero that means uh, the, the, that means uh, Reebok has less wear and tear compared to Nike and then the final 
hypothesis can be um, mu d less than or equal to 0 that means uh, again this is uh, sample 1 minus sample 2 which is um, Reebok so if this is a negative number that means Reebok has less wear and tear compared to uh, Nike so this is if you see the simple numbers if you put like this as 4 and this as 5 as wear and tear this is going to give you a negative number which is minus 1 so if it is a negative number Reebok has less wear and tear compared to uh, Nike so the alternative would be mu d greater than 0 that means uh, Reebok has more um, wear and tear compared to Nike so these are will be the hypothesis uh, why this is uh, this is the first step of our hypothesis testing and then the second step of our hypothesis testing is to compare test statistic with critical value again this is a t-test usually the sample sizes for this will be less than 30 so that's the reason why we are using t-test usually sample size n will be less than 30 in this kind of problems and your sigma is unknown so if you see the main important thing is even though we have our two data sets here by doing the difference we converted it into one data set and this will be treated as a one one sample that's the reason why you look these numbers will look uh, same as one sample that's the reason why i wrote n less than 30 and sigma is, is unknown rather than using n1 and n2 so the test statistic t here will be um, given as x d bar minus mu d divided by s d by square root of n so if you see this x d bar has come from this formula here and then our sd will come from this is the standard deviation of um, the deviations so will come from this formula here so that is how uh, it will be and then you will make conclusions and then we have another formula which is confidence interval for pair difference so this is given by the formula x d bar minus plus t alpha over 2 uh, s d by root n so that is how your formula will okay t alpha over 2 and then degree of freedom will be n minus 1 so one thing i forgot to tell you here is uh, the critical value what would be the critical value again the critical value here if it is a two tail problem your critical value will be t alpha over 2 n minus 1 if it is a one tail problem it will be t alpha n minus 1 uh, so that is how you are going to compare and make a conclusion so this is uh, uh, how uh, our uh, uh, paired difference the concept is we will try to uh, solve a problem on this and uh, try to understand whether we can solve problems on this so we have a paired difference so this is uh, i will try to generate 
um, a problem on in this uh, video lecture in my next video lecture i will try to solve some problems from hawks learning so paired difference i wanted to know whether uh, uh, whether there is a difference whether there is a difference in wear and tear of nike wear and tear of reebok and nike shoes uh, so that is my question so what i do is uh, I wanted to know at a significance level of level of uh, 0 0.05 of alpha is equal to 0 0.05 so what I do is uh, um, I first define my hypothesis so this will be my hypothesis h null and h alternative so i wanted to know the difference in wear and tear of the reebok and nike shoes so i define uh, reebok as uh, sample one and then i define uh, this as nike as sample two so the first thing if you wanted to write a hypothesis is to define your deviation how are you going to subtract so you are going to do reebok minus nike so this is um, sample one reebok and nike would be minus sample two so now i am saying uh, mu d will tell about the deviations so i wanted to know the, whether they are different so mu d not equal to zero will be my alternative because there is a difference in the wear and tear and then mu d is equal to zero both reebok and nike have same wear and tear so if this is zero that means uh, same wear and tear for both So once we have our hypothesis, so this is our hypothesis, then we we kind of collect our data. So this will be given. So we collect uh, five. Uh, we have we give it to five students. So this is a student, and then sample one so this will be uh, uh, leg one and then in this we ask them maybe they are where this will be uh, reebok and then leg two this will be sample two here they will be wearing nike so student one uh, the observation is uh, this is in millimeters the wear and tear so this is two millimeters and this will be three and then um, observation two one two millimeters observe and then subject three or student three three four um, and uh, fourth observation five two and then finally five this will be three one so the next step is this is we have to calculate this uh, what would be the difference again difference 
which is given by d so this is here d which we i'm saying is the difference or deviation you can say any one of them so okay i can write d here difference d so you do your difference is sample 1 minus sample 2 so this is d is sample 1 minus sample 2 so you do 2 minus 3 so 2 minus 3 is minus 1 1 minus 2 is minus 1 3 minus 4 is minus 1 5 minus 2 is 3 3 minus 1 is 2 so why are we doing this again we are using t stat mm, the t stat formula is xd bar minus mu d sd by square root of n so n here so this n here would be because we selected five students this will be five this mu d is going to come from uh, null hypothesis which is zero so this mu d is zero and then i need xd bar and sd so if i see these observations i calculated the deviations now xd bar will be the average of these deviations which is minus one minus one minus one plus three plus 2 divided by 5 this is average is sum of all the numbers divided by uh, the total numbers so which is xd bar is going to give us 0.4 so we got this this is 0.4 now we need sd it is this so we'll calculate SD in the next page. So SD, the formula is uh, summation of uh, DI minus XD bar whole square divided by N minus 1. So this will be, I will do minus 1 minus 0.4. So that is, so SD is square root of minus 1 minus 0.4 whole square plus because this is sum uh, and then minus 1 minus 0.4 again uh, so this will be minus 1 minus 0.4 whole square plus minus 1 minus 0.4 whole square the third one is also so this will be minus 1 and then I subtract this 0.4 then the next one will be 3 minus 0.4 so this will be 3 minus 0.4 whole square and the final would be 2 minus 0.4 whole square and then I divide the square root is for everything n minus 1 5 minus 1 so that is going to so if you calculate this you will get 1.949 so once you have these two uh, values now so the next step of hypothesis testing is uh, compare test statistic with critical value So when I say test statistic, the formula is T is equal to XD bar minus mu D divided by S over root N because the sample size is only 5. We will be using T stat. 
so this xd bar uh, again xd bar is given as 0.4 so not given we calculated it that is 0.4 mu d comes from our hypothesis which is 0 here so this will be 0 and then this is SD SD is 1.949 divided by square root of uh, n is 5 so we have um, 5 observations so that is n is equal to 5 so if you calculate this um, sorry if you calculate this you will get 0.4 divided by 0.87178 so this is 0.458831 so that is our t value so this is our t value the next step is to compare this with our critical value so critical value in this case because it's a one one it's a one sample problem it will be so i will do critical value here it will be uh, again if it is a two tail problem or a one tail problem you have to look at it because we have mu d exactly equal to zero so this is exactly so that means we can prove disprove the null hypothesis on both sides of a normal normal distribution curve if mu d is less than zero or if mu d is uh, greater than zero then we reject the null hypothesis so it's a two tail problem So critical value will be because it's a two tail problem T alpha over two N minus one. So alpha is given as 0 0.05. So alpha over two would be 0 0.025. N minus one is our degree of freedom. So um, N is five minus one is equal to four. So we are trying to uh, look for value T 0.0254 so again how does this look in our normal distribution curve so if i draw our normal distribution curve here so this will be mu d is equal to zero so anything left would be mu d less than or equal to zero right would be mu d greater than or equal to zero so we have uh, this uh, mm, uh, cutoff points which is critical values and this will be because our alpha is 0 0.05 this would be 0 0.95 and in this region because we are looking for 95 percent confidence interval your null hypothesis will be true this is a null hypothesis curve so in this you will say do not reject H null so that means you are saying mu d will be zero in this region and if you consider this the probability of this happening is uh, 0 0.025 and the probability of this happening is 0 0.025 these are alpha over 2 so here you will reject H null so because this is less than so here you are saying mu d will be strictly less than zero and in this region also you will be rejecting h null that means mu d will be strictly greater than zero that means the other way of saying is on this side mu d not equal to zero on this side mu d not equal to zero so alternative will be when you reject h null alternative would be true so once you have this you have to look for this value t 
point zero two five comma four so I will go to our t table and try to calculate what these points will be so again when I calculate this I am getting this point because t gives right side of the normal distribution curve so now I am going to go to our uh, uh, canvas and uh, go to modules look at module 0 go to calculation age and then uh, statistical tables then do enable editing and go to uh, t stat so currently i am in poison table i will go to t table and then i am looking for a value t.025 and 4 so I will go to the 0.025 T 0.025 and 4 so that value will be 2.7764 so I will go here and this will be 2.7764 seven seven six four so the value here is uh, I will use a different color this here is two point seven seven six four and this here is negative two point seven seven six four so now I will go and look at where what is my t value my t value is 0.45 so where does 0.45 lie so this is negative 2 point so 0 so 0.45 will be somewhere here so this will be 0.45 so I am in do not reject h null area so we conclude that do not reject H null so when I say do not reject H null um, that means this statement is true so that means mu d is equal to 0 that means both the deviations are equal so that means Reebok and Nike have same wear and tear so this really this means um, Reebok and Nike have same or has has same wear and tear So I will use the same example and try to solve by using calculation aids. Let's see whether we can do this problem by using our calculation aids. So again I will note down uh, my data. So we are looking at this entire data so I don't think I can and note down the entire data I will just use it um, from here itself so let's go to our calculation aids and download the data uh, download the chapter 11 copy of uh, chapter 11 calculation aids so this is chapter 11 calculation aids
now I will go to mean paid different mean paid and then you just have to key in in sample one you will key in your numbers in sample two you will key in your numbers and then you will get your you will put alpha values so so the first thing I will do is uh, key in each sample numbers so So rather than me going back and forth, I have these numbers in a sheet of paper next to me. So I will just key in from that sheet of paper. So I'm for sample one, I will do uh, enter. Uh, let me use a different color. I will enter these numbers for sample two. I will enter these numbers and my alpha. I said alpha is 0 0.05 so let me key in those numbers so here this is 2 uh, and then this is 1 and then three and then five and then three so for sample two i will key in the second sample numbers so I will go to the sheet and show you what I'm keying in so I will be keying in uh, all these numbers for sample 2 so those will be three two again four two oh, sorry two and then one So alpha is 0 0.05 so it's, uh, it's uh, I don't have to key and it's already there so our sample mean is 0.4 and standard deviation is 1.949 sample size is 5 mm. so low we got lower bound and upper bound if you see lower bound is negative 2 and the upper bound is mm, 2.8 so if you see 0 lies within this that means your mu d is equal to zero lies within this bounds so that means you cannot reject your null hypothesis that's how you make conclusion based on the confidence interval so if they ask you confidence interval you have to key in those numbers uh, which case to use now again you see here um, uh, your you will go here and you will look for how does your alternative hypothesis look so your alternative is uh, mu d not equal to so you will go to the calculation aids and if you see this is mu d greater than this is mu d less than and here your alternative is mu d not equal to so you will be using this so your critical value would be 2.77 so you will key in this critical value and then they say don't reject null hypothesis that means both Nike and uh, Reebok have same wear and tear. So this concludes my lecture on a paid difference. Uh, I will be discussing more problems on this concept. Thank you.